Senator Luther Strange from the great state of Alabama, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here, thank you. For starters, can you tell us a little bit about the kinds of agriculture we might find in your, in your home state? Now, Alabama has a real diversity in the ag, uh, our ag economy. So we have everything from your staple crops like cotton and uh, soybeans, corn, uh, just a, a peanuts uh, to uh, all the livestock type things, cows, chickens, uh, uh, pork, uh, big in our state, uh, poultry particularly big, and then timber is, is, is one of the largest components of our uh, ag economy. Mm -hmm. So when you came to the Senate, you asked to be placed on the Senate Agriculture Committee. Why was that? Well, because I care about the, our economy, and uh, that's the biggest component in our economy. And uh, uh, the issues are interesting to me. Uh, they involve uh, domestic, international, uh, all concept, all the components of the economy. And then, uh, you know, my family had a farm when I was growing up, so it was kind of fun to uh, get back to uh, uh, that, that world. And it had been quite a while since someone from your from from the state of Alabama was on that committee as well. It's been over 20 years. The last senator we had on the ag committee was Howell Heflin. But there's another reason I wanted to be on the committee because we needed to have a seat at that table, uh, given the importance of the agriculture, cultural industry to our economy. To be on the committee was really important to our state. And how have you found that uh, the workings to be in that committee? Because it's often said in Washington that uh, a lot of politics are partisan, but agricultural politics are more regional. Is, is, is that holding <laughs> true? I found it to be true. And I'm glad to be one of the new members from the Southeast. We have our own, uh, you know, a climate, our own uh, ag community and uh, economy there, um, and to be a voice for that part of the, the country. Um, but it has been very much regional. Uh, it's it's kind of nice to be in a nonpartisan environment uh, where we're trying to solve problems. Uh, and the, the problems are complicated, but it's so far been a lot of fun. So as you work on that committee, and, and especially as the committee works to write a new farm bill, what are some of the priorities that you have for, for your time on the Senate Agriculture Right. Committee? Well, you know, as I hit the ground uh, now as a new member, uh, the pressing need for Alabama is to address the cotton situation. Uh, cotton needs to be part of Title I. Uh, you know, the history is, uh, is long and torturous with cotton, and so our efforts to get some relief for our cotton farmers in the state, very important component. Uh, of our economy. And then trade issues are important to me. So we, uh, I mentioned poultry just for one example. We export a lot of poultry. I'd like to export more. Um, so uh, we have a port, a large port in Mobile in the southern part of our state. So those are important issues. Mm -hmm. Looking more broadly than just the Senate Agriculture Committee, your time as Attorney General in, in Alabama, one of the things that you did was join a lawsuit against uh, the EPA's Waters of the U.S. rule. Right. Why, why did you think that was an important step to take? Well, it was really important as AG to make sure we stood up for the rule of law in the Constitution. And uh, the EPA, uh, under the Obama administration, was one of the most egregious agencies in terms of uh, exceeding their authority. Um, they have a role to play, uh, but I, along with another uh, a large group of uh, AGs, pushed back against the EPA. What is the U.S.? It's a perfect example of that. Uh, and now I've joined with my colleagues in sending a letter asking them to just withdraw the rule completely. The other good part of that story is that for seven, six, almost seven years uh, as AG, I worked closely with Scott Pruitt when he was Attorney General of uh, Oklahoma and uh, suing the EPA, including on the waters of the U.S., Clean Power Plan Rule and others. Now Scott's the administrator of the EPA and is still a dear friend. He's come down to Alabama to talk about the new day in the EPA, getting back to its core mission and getting off the backs of our uh, uh, farmers uh, men and women around the country who are trying to do the right thing, protect the environment, be profitable, produce great crops and products. Uh, so I'm really proud to have been a part of that from AG all the way here to the Senate. Your time in the, as Attorney General lasted, uh, I believe, six years, mm -hmm. and uh, you've been in the Senate here for, for a handful of months. What have, what have you seen has the big, been the biggest difference between interpreting and enforcing the law as Attorney General to writing the law here as a, as a United States Senator? Now that's a great question because as AG, uh, we always had to bear in mind that we didn't get to pick and choose the laws we liked or didn't like. It wasn't our job to uh, make up laws as we went along. Uh, that We have a great constitutional system that allows our citizens through their representatives to change the laws that they uh, feel need to be changed. So uh, that has been an interesting process to make that transition. Uh, one of the interesting things is uh, how difficult it is to get consensus among our Republican friends. We've seen that in, uh, most recently in health care and some of the other issues. So uh, uh, I'm a little uh, frustrated with the slow pace of things, not just in passing needed legislation, but also in confirming nominees the president desperately needs to be in place. Uh, Democrats have slowed that process down to a crawl. 
um, and to address other things besides health care like basic tax reform, uh, I call it tax relief, the death tax, other things that affect the ag industry, top of my list, and then uh, regulatory reform. We're making progress at the EPA and other uh, agencies, but we need to do better uh, to sort of lift the regulatory wet blanket that sits over our economy and it particularly impacts our uh, ag community. And obviously when you came to the Senate, the, the people of your home state traded really one attorney general for another <laughs> as, the, right. as your predecessor was yeah. named to be, uh, Senator Sessions was named to be the attorney general. Were you able to get any, any pieces of advice from him as far as you know, representing your, your state on, on this national level? Well, I was. Uh, uh, Senator Sessions, now General Sessions, was my mentor politically. Uh, I got involved in politics because of his example. Um, he was Attorney General of Alabama before I was Attorney General, one or two terms before mine. So uh, I've always looked to him to understand how to conduct yourself. And I guess the thing he taught me was uh, know what your principles are, be true to your principles, don't compromise your integrity uh, or those principles, and, uh, and be consistent. And so that's what I've tried to do. Other thing Senator, now General Sessions, was very good at was listening to his constituents, understanding what their concerns are. Because people of Alabama, like I think you'll find in every state, uh, really are looking for common sense solutions to the problems that actually affect them and their real lives. Sometimes in Washington people get caught up in um, issues that may sound important on the TV news but have no relationship to what's going on in a family's life, you know, trying to have a good job, and feed their family, educate their children, uh, go to their church, support their church, all those things. And so um, I'm just getting used to the pace of Washington. It's a little frustratingly slow, but uh, I'm honored to be here. We talked a little bit earlier about your priorities when it came to agricultural legislation, but looking more broadly at the, the entire purview of the United States Senate, what did you come to Washington to do? I came to find common sense solutions, uh, conservative solutions to the problems that affect people's lives. And so um, I think the conservative uh, approach, whether it's uh, physically, um, it's, uh, in terms of values and so forth, have proven to be the backbone of success in this country. I think the law should reflect that, and so, and I think they're the common sense approaches that fix, actually fix real problems. So that's what I came to Washington to try and do, really make a difference. Mm -hmm. When you're back home uh, in Alabama, what are some things that you enjoy doing, maybe, maybe when you're not on the clock, as scarce <laughs> as that might be? Well, uh, I love getting out with my dog. I have a, uh, a, a black lab that loves to go hunting and swimming and fishing with me, and so every chance I get, I take her out uh, somewhere outside in the great outdoors and uh, and they say if you're gonna need a friend in Washington you better get a dog you know and so I'm really looking forward to having her up here full time as well. What's the what's the favorite hunt you've done with your dog? Oh gosh you know she likes to go uh, any kind of hunting anything that gets out in the woods I like to go uh, duck hunting you know that's the most fun to me but uh, she really doesn't care as a matter of fact if I just take a decoy out and throw it she's perfectly happy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit uh, question more, more tied to your time in Washington. Obviously a question that you, or a, a topic you might get a lot was the time that you were, you were playing basketball in your college days mm -hmm. in Tulane. Um, wondering if you were to, to pick a basketball team amongst your colleagues in the Senate, who uh, obviously uh, I, I would put you in that starting five, who's, who's your other four? Well, that's a good question. Uh, there are a lot of good uh, athletic uh, senators up here, you know, and I haven't seen them all play basketball, but I would have to bet uh, Senator Thune of South Dakota would be one of the people you want on your team. Todd Young from Indiana is uh, one of their younger guys, pretty athletic uh, guy. Senator Shelby, my colleague from Alabama, is tall, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you need height. Um, and let's see, maybe Tom Cotton. I think Tom is almost as tall as I am. So I think we could put it together a pretty good starting five right there. Yeah, sounds like a pretty scrappy bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I never get the ball. They never pass it to me, probably, right. but that's all right. <laughs> and, and I'll wrap up with this one. Uh, what do you think is the most important issue? You talked about some, some of your issues or some of your priorities when it came to mm -hmm. agricultural legislation or, or broad things in the mm -hmm. Senate. What do you think is the most important issue the United States Senate can address here in the in the very near term, maybe in the coming weeks and months here uh, for for their constituents? Well, there's so many Con confirming conservative judges, uh, fixing the collapsing health care system. But if I had to say one in response to your question, I would say uh, get the economy going. That's where agriculture comes into play, but much broader than that. That means tax relief for the families of this country, the small businessmen and women, uh, the people who are out in the ag community working hard every day, investing money, We've got to lower their taxes, deal with the death tax, things like that, and really uh, free them up to keep more of their own money. When they do that, they'll invest it back into the farm or back into their business. 
and ultimately that increases our uh, prosperity for everyone. Senator Luther Strange, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me today.